Hello everyone and welcome to my cozy bamboo jungle. I've recently reached over a thousand days survived in my world and today I've summarized our adventures and builds leading up to us hitting a thousand days into a cozy movie for you all to enjoy. If you're new to my channel, I love creating cozy builds and have a fair bit of shenanigans and adventures throughout this video. This is the perfect movie to get some snacks and drinks to enjoy watching or to have on in the background to keep you company. Now this movie is a part two of our adventures in this world since I did have to break it up otherwise we'd have a seven plus hour movie. So we'll be starting on episode nine of our adventures today. If you haven't seen part one, I've linked in the video description below so that you can enjoy even more cozy movie vibes from this world. Now let's get into it. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode in our 1.20 adventure. Today, we have a few different goals that we're going to work on. Now in our last episode, we went looking for some bees and today we're gonna make them a home. I also want to go back and use our archeology span brush on the same ruins where we first found that sniffer egg just to be sure I didn't miss any of them because I was trying to avoid a bunch of drowned and well, also not drowned. So we're gonna use some water breathing potions and go back there today. And I also want to finally bring our little pink sheep friend back over to our base area. But first things first, we are going to start working on clearing out some space to put our apiary. And on a live stream, we spent some time collecting resources so that I have everything I'll need to start building this up. And this is the spot that I want to put our little apiary. In Freecam, it's easier to see that we are going to make a rectangular shaped build and we are going to stick it right here where this little mound is. That way we're able to see our little apiary from our starter home and it's over by all of our crop fields and our animals. Our build palette is mainly gonna be dark oak, the white stained glass, and then our roof is going to be decorated with the azalea leaves. And we've got extra bone meal in case they want to make extra white stained glass. But then we also have all of our bee nests right here. And I'm going to be using the honeycomb blocks to decorate with as well. So that will be a fun building block that we're actually going to pair with the dark oak. But before we can build, we need to terraform and transform this area. So enjoy the time lapse. Okay, now we not only have our full shape of our bee house created, laid out, we also extended this down a little bit so it doesn't just look like our little bee house is sitting on a cliffside here. Now the next thing that I want to do is actually have the farm that's going to be harvesting our honey be hidden underneath the pretty little apiary. So we're gonna go collect a bunch of supplies to make the redstone components of this farm. And then we're gonna actually start putting it underground and filling out and decorating that room first. And then we're going to build up the apiary on top of it. So we're gonna go back to our little storage place, which is getting very small. I, I think I will need to make ourselves like a pagoda for storage or something because I'm running out of space. But for just a little bit longer, we can survive in this area, but we're gonna take a bunch of redstone. I think we'll need some repeaters and different blocks to build with, but I'm gonna grab a bunch of stone to be our building blocks for the farm. And I know we're gonna need to have a bunch of rails, which I, I have iron, like I can make the rails and powered rails. So I think we're going to work on just collecting up all the supplies we'll need to make this little farm. So I started mining up some redstone. Making some redstone torches. Making some comparators. Grabbed more quartz and redstone. Grabbed some bows from the skelly spawner. And started the process of making some dispensers by replacing the bows every single time. Which I wish dispensers were easier to craft than having to manually put in a bow. It, it would just be so much easier if it was quicker. Slice some skellies for more bows. And made the last dispensers I needed. Then made some beehives. All right, we've got a bunch of the redstone stuff that we'll need. I'm going to make a bunch of shears. We've got extra beehives because I think I'd rather use the beehives in the actual farm and then have the bee and nests be above in the pretty little apiary since I think they look a little bit nicer than the beehives. So we're going to find the exact center and then put this in the back middle. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35
14, 15, 16, 17. So this is the exact middle. So this is going to be the back of it. So what I'm going to do is we're going to be digging down here. Oh, I found my water again. But we're going to dig down here. We're going to end up creating a little bit of a little ladder system to get down here. But then we're going to set up our farm. And it should look really nice when we're all done with it. We just have to get rid of the water that I forgot about. So one sec, we're gonna deal with that. So I just started filling up the spaces with random blocks that I had in my inventory, clearing that out to make space for the farm. All right, everyone, we have most of the bee farm done, except for adding in the bees. Now, what I want to do is take the bees out of their little nests here and move them into the beehives. So I'm going to let all of our little bees roam free in here. I have sealed the door so they can't get out. And I'm going to just have like some dirt here, add some flowers in here so they're able to still get some flowers. But I am going to put the hives here, but we need to first add in all of the shears, so we're gonna do that next. So we're just gonna make a ton of shears, and we'll just put like two in each, I would say is probably gonna be good. Two in that one, two in there, two in there, two in here, two in this one, two in here, and two in here. Now that the shears are in place, we're going to add these beehives in here. And then I'm going to add the ones that actually have the bees in them. There we go. And there we go. Perfect. Now, in theory, they should be looking to go into these ones instead. Now, I want to be able to make sure that if I take these beehives out, that the bees aren't going to like come and attack me. So I'm going to grab some campfires and add campfires in along here. And we're adding our bees nests down here, keeping them safe. Okay, perfect. Okay, I picked up all of the bee nests and I'm waiting for them to go into the bee hives. So we should be good once they actually go inside these. So now we're just gonna wait until it is night and they go inside here and we should be good to go. And I'm gonna add the glass in then. But while we wait, why don't we breed up some cute little bees? Look at you guys, you're adorable, yeah! Oh my gosh, there's so many of you out and about. Now you might think that breeding bees is pretty cozy, but it doesn't take long for this to become uncozy. You take a little bit of flowers, there we go. Oh, I guess I can plant them too. <gasps> no! Oh my gosh, I'm literally gonna lose all of my bees. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I'm literally gonna die. Oh my goodness, no! My bees are gonna die. Oh man, I had so many bees around me. I was trying to pick up a flower and I punched one. <sighs> At least my stuff's close by. I have no words, and I don't want to hear any words, okay? Okay. <sighs> and there's all my stuff. Oh, when they're dying, I feel so bad. All right, guys, come out from behind here. Jeepers. Jeepers. Oh, all the bees are dying. I hate this. I got stung so many times. Oh, it's tragic. 
Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. Oh my gosh, look how many are gone. <gasps> wow, I got stung so many times. We have like none left. <gasps> are you really all that I have? I have five? That is like actually such a rip. F in the chats for our fallen B friends. I cannot believe I got stung by that many where I literally have like five left. Like if this is all I have left for Bs, that's insane. Oh, okay. There was a sixth. Okay. We don't just have five. That's a little better. A little. So we once again began breeding up the bees to repopulate. Well, it's bedtime for the bees, and I'm just going to work on repopulating our poor bee population. And I'm also going to set up the collection system to have all of our honeycomb picked up. I'm using andesite to be the marker of where I set up the system with the rails and everything. So we're going to go work on this next. I'm keeping this closed in case the bees try to go under. But then we're just going to be working on... <laughs> fixing our poor little bee population and getting the redstone done but i'm gonna sleep so the bees come out and i can keep breeding and get our farm back in action next we made some powered rails and started setting up the redstone rails with the redstone block we set up the chest system and the hopper and then we began breeding up the bees some more now as we're breeding these bees up I just was thinking, I just stayed in the game and tried to escape the bees. I probably could have just, you know, quit the game and entered back in and they probably would not be aggroed on me then. I just thought of that. And now I am very bummed that I have to do all of this bee repopulation because I forgot about that fact. So I'm just trying to make sure everyone can, uh, yeah, we can repopulate them, but I am a little bit bummed that I didn't think about that concept of just like quitting the game so they stop aggroing until after the fact. You live and you learn, guys. You live and you learn. Then it was back to making the farm and then breeding up the bees a ton so that we can get our population back up as quickly as possible to what we had it at before. Since we've got, I think, mostly all of the bees repopulated, what I'm trying to do is make it so that these ones will specifically be our farm bees, but I want there to be extra bees so that each hive will be full of bees. And then there's still some extras that like at night, they're not able to get inside a beehive because I want to use some of these and actually like put them up on the wall here and just start collecting bees so that I can have some bees upstairs as well in the apiary so that they're not just down here inside their little uh, farm area. Okay, I checked and it is officially a night upstairs, which means you can hear them popping into their little spots, which is great. And any of the bees that are not able to get inside, I'm just going to put down some hives for them. So let's give some hives for these ones and see if they want to go inside here. I'll kind of lure them over here. Come on, little guy. There's a hive over here for you. Go inside. Thank you very much. Silk touch. And there we go. So we should have at least three bees in here. And then we'll have some bee nests also that are kind of like for aesthetics. But now that we have these guys fully in here and working, we're going to put the glass over the top and then we're going to go upstairs and sleep. Okay, and there we go. Perfect. Okay, our farm should be working. We're getting honeycomb. Love to see it. I'm going to spread this honeycomb out so it starts collecting up inside here. Oh man, this is so good. I'm so excited for this. And the farm is officially working. Now let's do some cozy building up on the surface. Enjoy the time lapse.
there we go, guys. We have our Japanese B apiary completed, and I think this is so beautiful. If we go down to ground level, you can kind of see that we have just azaleas along the whole edge. We have some little honeycomb blocks, and all the way around, we just have lots of the white glass, making it very light and airy, and I really feel like it's very peaceful and I'm super happy with this so far, and I'm excited to finish decorating this. So let's get into the fun part, which is decorating the inside and adding some cozy vibes to it. Okay guys, we have officially decorated the interior and it is so cozy. Now first, once again from the outside, this is what we have and I think it is super cute. You can already see the interior a little bit. But around the outside, I used mainly the white and pink flowers. We have tulips that are white and pink. We've used the cherry blossoms. But a lot of what I used was just some more like greenery with some pink and white flowers because I felt like it fit the vibe best. And because I also decided to use a lot more pink inside our apiary, just because, you know, cherry wood is also one of the new wood types and I haven't really used a lot of it. So I figured I might as well use it inside our apiary and it looks great. So if we come inside, I'm gonna quickly close the door. Oh, there's a vine growing. We're gonna get rid of that. But here's what we have on the inside, all of the particles from both the cherry blossom leaves and the spore blossom are just falling down and we've got the honey particles also falling and I think this is so, so cozy and I love this so much with the sun coming through, you can even see the blue sky up here. And we have these little benches that I created so that you can kind of just sit down and enjoy the views. But what do you guys think of our little bee apiary pagoda? I absolutely love this. Like, these are just the coziest vibes. And I do like that I used more of the pinkish, like cherry blossoms in this little area as well. I, I love it so much. Like, I could just sit in here and just look around and I, I love it so much. We still have not decorated the downstairs part of the bee farm, but that's something that I think I will want to do. I like the idea of having a lot of the little just like flowers in here. So they've got some like particles that will be dropping down, but I also don't want them to get distracted and not use the flowers that they have. But our farm is working really well. Like we've got a full row, just stacks of honeycomb and we're already going into the second row. I'm, I'm very happy with this farm. Like this is definitely already more than I need, but I, I love it. I think it's a perfect farm and we have the best little glass pagoda to go over top of it. And zooming out in free cam, here's what our little glass apiary looks like at a distance. I think even though it does look very different to our build styles, it also works because we have the dark oak trim and it's in our Japanese style roof. 
I think this is just so beautiful. And I'm really proud of this design because I've never seen somebody do a design build like this. So I thought this was really cool and unique. But now that we have the cozy build done, the interior and exterior of this place looks great. It's time to clean up this mess. And I also want to kind of decorate the path and make it look a little bit nicer as like a walkway up to this place. So that's what we're gonna work on next. Me getting rid of my little mini chest monster situation and making a nice little path. And it didn't take long for me to get distracted and I decided to make a pond by our little bee apiary instead. Once the water was filled, we did make the stairs leading up to our apiary. Then we made a cozy little bench for people to sit at by our little pond that we had. Then I decided I wanted to add in a dock by our little pond and I think this turned out really cute. Then we added some lighting on the edges of the dock to just make it a little bit more cozy. Started adding azalea pots at the entrance to the apiary and added some lighting inside the apiary with some lanterns and then added some lanterns to the outside of the apiary as well. All right, the exterior is now decorated and I really like it. It's a simple little entrance. We've kind of got the these planter pots to kind of signify like there's something here, like this is an entryway to come up into our little bee apiary. Made a little hanging sign as the new 1.20 feature allows us to hang them. And then I added in some coarse dirt and just made path blocks for our just little entryway. Over here though, I made a cute little pond and seating area and a little mini dock. And then we have our cherry blossom tree. I bone mealed this so we had a little extra plant life in here, but I do kind of want to get some fish in here. So I'm thinking we go down into our lush caves and then we grab some of those tropical fish that are hanging around. And of course, we're gonna grab some drip leaf because that's always cute. So we're gonna grab some more buckets and then we'll grab some big drip leaf to go back over there. But let's go and grab us some little fishy friends. And now that we have a bunch of little fishies, let's go put them inside the little pond. So we have a few different types of fish. So we have a tomato clownfish. So we'll put them in first. He's a cutie. Next, we have a dotty back, a little purple and yellow. We've got a flopper in pink. Is that guy? We've got the Moorish idol which is this guy. And we've got the goat fish, which I didn't even know we had a goat fish. Doesn't look very goat-like, but you know, they're cute. Next, we have the emperor red snapper. So they're going in. And finally, we have the cotton candy beta fish. And that's that one, which that one is definitely on brand. Very cotton candy vibes is what I'm getting. Next, I did want to add some of the little drip leaves into here because I think that will just make it super cute in here. And we've got some added over here. We'll add one over here and we'll put one right there. And there we go. I really like it. They, they're kind of hiding underneath the, the little dock, but I think it's really cute. They're just kind of all hanging out here and I love it. I think this adds a nice little cozy spot before we go inside our little apiary and I, I love it so much. And now we go adventure with our archeology span brush. And while we're out and about, we are actually going to also bring back our pink sheep because they need to have a little home with us. We also need a name for our pink sheep. So comment below what you think we should name our pink sheep and we will be able to make them a little place to live in our area here, a little house in a later episode as well. But firstly, we need our archeology span brush. Next, we're gonna go down to where we have our potion room and we're going to grab one of our water breathe potions and we'll do a second for backup. And to make traveling easier, we're gonna go through the nether since the easiest way to get to the Sasand little ruins was going through the portal by that village. All right, we're in the village and then we're just gonna work our way down over here because that is where the Sasand ruins are. 
Oh, and there's a little, little dude. And as expected, I then got distracted trying to lure this zombie villager over by our villager so that we could use this guy to cure our villagers and lower their prices. So I worked on boxing them in, then I transferred them into a boat and we were good. So we just fixed up the cover so the iron golems wouldn't get them. But distractions aside, it's time to use our archeology span brush. Now I'm also going to make myself a boat to make it a little bit easier to get closer to these ruins to find things. So let's go plop on in the water here and get in our little boat. And then we're going to take our water breathing potion to make all of this easier. But I did also bring a door, but with our two, we should be okay. So let's take a water breathing potion. We've got eight minutes left on this. Now let's use our brush. We've got our shovel in case we need it. And let's go digging. So we began brushing the sand, looking to see if we could uncover any of the sus sand blocks. Found our first one and it was an emerald. Our second was just wheat. But our third was a pottery shirt that ended up being the little sniffer one. The one after that was an emerald and then another emerald. But the next one was by far my favorite. Guys, we found another sniffer egg. Oh my gosh. <gasps> we can finally breed them at our base. Oh my gosh, I'm literally so excited. This is literally why I wanted to come back here just in case we found a sniffer egg. But we found a sniffer egg and the snort pottery shard that has a sniffer on it. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, this was a good call. I am very glad I came back here just to check out the scenery. And that goes to show, guys, like, never feel like it's too late to go back to the same places you've already looked because you might find something new no way is this oh this is cool i thought i was gonna get another sniffer egg and i was about to be so so happy and as we continued we didn't really get much else we were getting coal we were getting the wooden hose some emeralds and some more hose so there wasn't really a whole lot so we wrapped it up well i think i've scoured all the different structures and the best thing we found was the sniffer egg and the snort pottery shirt now it's time to go get us a pink sheep i still can't believe we got a sniffer egg and the snort pottery shirt I'm literally so excited. We can breed our sniffers as soon as I get back. I'm so pumped. And now we're just walking on foot to find our little pink sheep friend. And so far I'm just seeing pigs, but I think he's around this hillside. So that's where we're gonna go next to check if our dude's still there. Okay, I see our little sheep friend just hanging in their boat. It's time to bring you home, my friend. Hello, pink sheep. I did not forget about you. Don't you worry, it is time to go back to our base area. So let's just turn you around and now we just start the process of bringing this guy back in the boat, which could take a while, but it'll be great because then we'll have a little sheep that's pink in our base. And I'm already going into walls, nice. All right, we've got our little friend in here finally, and I'm literally just gonna leave them in here for now just to wander, and then we'll find a place for them later on. Today, I want to work on building a cozy Japanese-inspired pagoda for our little pink sheep friend. So if you're excited, make sure to leave a like on the video and check if you're subscribed. In between episodes, I actually added a new mod that allows me to shear vines because I would get so many random vines just getting in the way of my paths, you know, just causing chaos. So now 
our vines can be sheared and I left the mod that I selected to let me shear these in the description below. So now we can choose the length we want to keep all of our vines at and they will stay there. But as far as where we are going to build our pink sheep pagoda, we're going to clear out all of this space here by our panda friend and we'll probably move them because they're gonna get their own house later on. But we're gonna create a two layered little pink sheep pagoda, the bottom layers where the sheep will be. So first things first, we do need to open up this area, start clearing things out, make some space so that we can actually we kind of make it actually more of an entrance, but we're just gonna get started working on creating some cleared out space so we can start building. All right, so we have our space cleared out that we're going to make our pink sheep pagoda. Now the only thing left to do is go and collect some resources. And we are gonna be using a lot of the dark oak as our roof trim. And because it's a pink sheep pagoda, I want to use some pink cherry wood as some of the block accents. But there's one other block that I don't have in my area yet, and that is terracotta. However, on a live stream, we were able to go and locate some camels, and we found a coral reef, which was nearby a mesa. So we're gonna go into the nether and go to that mesa, collect a bunch of terracotta, pick up some pink coral, and then we'll be ready to start building a pink sheep pagoda. Now on the live stream where we went and we found the coral, the mesa, and the camels, I ended up going in the overworld really, really far, like very far, in order to find these biomes. However, tunneling back in the nether, it is a bit chaotic, so bear with me. First, we had to tower up to the netherrack layer above the one our portal was based on. Next, we climbed down our very narrow and cursed winding staircase towards the nether roof. We ran down our long tunnel for a while, grabbed some quartz along the way, then kept running down our tunnel. Found some super sketchy sections we left from before and made some safety walls. Ran down our tunnel some more, started replacing the soul sand and soul soil with netherrack while aggressively holding shift and hoping we don't fall. Ran down our tunnel some more and finally we saw our nether portal to the desert temple and camels. All right, we have made it through to our desert that has our camel in the little village there. Now you can already see that there's a bunch of terracotta just on the other side of this hillside. So we are here to collect a bunch of terracotta quickly. And then we are also gonna go and continue grabbing some coral because I wanna use some of that pink bubble coral to add to our little build. So let's just uh, collect up some of this and then go grab coral. With terracotta in hand, we made our way through the nether over to our newly discovered coral reef. <sighs> oh, we have a friend following us. Look at that. Oh, how rude. Okay, two can play this game. Silly. Okay, and here, oh, and sea pickles. I forgot about sea pickles. Oh, good, I'm so excited. So the type of coral that I'm looking for is this type specifically, because I have a really cool idea for it. So we're gonna just work on collecting some of these. I really should have brought water breathing potions, but that is a future red problem and, well, solution, I guess, for this type of thing. So let's just collect up some coral, shall we?
with the sun starting to set, we are going to get in our boat and go back through the portal before we end up getting any more mobs attacking us. But I would say we got a good haul. I got a lot of the pink coral, which is what I wanted. So I think we are good to go. Once we were back at our base area, I started adding the sea pickles and different coral to just add some pops of color and extra lighting into their little sanctuary. And I love how this turned out so much. And look at that. It's so crazy how just a little bit of coral and some sea pickles just makes this look so much more cozy. I love this so much. Oh, it makes me want to be here too. These axolotls have a great little home. But let's get out of the water before we drown. Now I'm going to quickly drop off our coral. We're going to grab some bone meal and create a lot of pink dye because we need to be able to make all of our little pink dye to replace our terracotta and make it pink terracotta. Now on a live stream, we were able to go use our archaeology brush and we found three more sniffer eggs. So we are going to go quickly bring those to our sniffer sanctuary and we are going to let them grow up. And I want to actually breed up our sniffers. So we're going to go say hello to our little sniffer and give him some more friends because they've been in here alone since I created this thing, which just sounds so sad. So let's put a friend here, one here, and let's do one here. They're all on the moss blocks, which allows them to grow up quicker than just regular dirt. So let's see how long it takes for these guys to grow. Hold, we, we have a potential seed. What, what would you give? Oh yes, okay, so we have two of these, perfect. So as soon as one of these grows up, we can breed them right away. Now, even though I already have four sniffers in here, just with the eggs that we located in the art, in the dig sites, I do still want to breed them up because, well, it's kind of fun to do it yourself, right? But we're going to hold on to the torch flower seeds for now and go over to start working on building up our little pagoda. And of course, it is night and raining. Rainforest life, I tell ya. Look at that, we have our first little sniffer that's hatching. Oh, oh, look at you, you're all here. Oh my gosh, hi guys. Oh my word, I love these guys so much. Oh my word, they're so cute. Okay guys, all of our sniffers are officially hatched and I need four name suggestions from you guys on what we should name them and of course, I would like to keep the names in our Japanese-inspired theme to match our build style for this series. Oh, but I'm so excited to have these guys, except I I don't like how you're, like, in this corner. Um, you're gonna end up, like, hurting yourself, okay? Um, can you, like, not be in there? Like, can you not... You're just like asking to suffocate in a wall. And I don't like that you're asking that, okay? So you're just gonna go this way. We're gonna block up this wall again because I'm not losing my little sniffers. But now that our sniffers have hatched, we're gonna go and chop down a bunch of cherry wood since that's gonna be the main roof build with dark oak as the roof trim. So let's go back to our spawn area and we're gonna collect up a bunch of the cherry wood from the cherry grove. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but the way that cherry wood sounds when you harvest it just sounds so good as like an ASMR noise. Like just, just listen, enjoy the ASMR. Let me know in the comments if you think that it sounds nice or if you think it sounds a little too weird and you're not a fan. Oh, 
well now that I have these guys to get in my way and to worry about. I think we're gonna call it good. I think this is definitely more than enough cherry wood, so let, let's just leave this area. Um, the pillagers can have it for now. I'll, I'll deal with that if I come to it later, but for now, we're gonna go back home with all of our pink cherry wood collected and get to building our little pink sheep pagoda, which it's going to look very similar to how our nether pagoda looks, but we are changing some of the things and I can't wait to show you. So let's just head on home. All right, we are back at our area to make our little pink sheep pagoda. We've collected tons of the cherry wood and of course the leaves and the little petals. And I think now it is time to get building. Enjoy the time lapse. Okay, quick distraction break. We need to cure this guy. Grabbing ourselves a weakness potion. Grabbing a golden apple. And you get splashed and you get an apple. Okay, there we go. All right, you stay here and cure. And I'm gonna keep working on our sheep's house. Well, I, I guess you, you really can't go anywhere else, so you are just kind of stuck here to cure, but you know, it'll be great. Well, it looks like our friend has come to the human side. We just have to figure out what kind of job you should have. All right, guys, in the comments below, let me know what villager we should add to our area that you guys think would be most helpful for our area and helping us thrive some more. But while we just let this guy kind of hang out in our area, we're gonna keep on working on our little pink sheep pagoda, but this is what we have so far, guys. I'm using the trap doors with the coral to keep it alive with water behind the trap doors because I saw a mythical sausage do this once and I loved the idea. So definitely taking inspiration from what he did there. And I think it's really cute, but the shape is pretty much identical to what we have at our nether pagoda because I really liked the shape and the size of it. And I think it's just a nice little addition to our area. And I like having similar build styles in our area. All we have to do next is finish our inside floor, a little bit of the roof and our second floor. So let's keep building. Uh, guys, I went to quickly go check on my sniffers and how all four of them were growing up, and I walked into just these two. No one else is in here. It's literally just these two. So that means two of them must have suffocated as they grew up. Well, I guess we only need names for two for now. That's so sad. Oh uh, yeah, okay. There was a few spots where they definitely could have done the grow up and suffocate in a wall bit. And I, I'm so sad that this was even an option. I think I baby sniffer proof this so that when they grow up, they won't suffocate. I still just can't believe we had two of them. We lost two of them. Two of our sniffer eggs from digging in the sus sand were lost. So, guys, valuable lesson. 
double and triple check to make sure your environment for your sniffers won't cause them to die as they grow up. So for now, we're gonna leave these two. Hopefully, I come back to at least two. Now that they're grown up, they shouldn't have any more issues, but who knows at this point. Now the next thing to work on is getting all of our pretty leaves on our rooftop because it always just adds a little extra to a roof. All right, everyone. Our pink sheep pagoda is complete. From a free cam aerial point of view, this is what we have, and I love it so much. I cannot wait to move our little friend in here. It's gonna be perfect. But walking up, we've just got the coral, we've got potted plants. On the sides, we have just some lanterns. We've got some more coral planters on the sides. We use the same kind of trapdoor divider that we used with the bamboo trapdoors. And I think this works really well with the cherry wood as well for the trapdoors making those kind of dividers. But this is where our sheep is going to stay. And we've got two little water troughs on either side for them and lots of hay bales for them as well. Lots of particles from both the cherry, pink leaves, and of course, the spore blossom. As we go up the stairs, this is more of just storage, meeting room, hangout type of an area. We've got some empty bookshelves where people could come, do some sitting down, read a little bit, add some books here, but mostly just storage up here. And of course, we've got the little cherry particles coming up here as well, but I think this is super cute. But now that the pagoda's all done, it's time to bring our sheep over and name them from the comment suggestions you guys left for me on the last episode. Now, from the last episode, you guys gave me such great name suggestions. However, I can obviously only pick one name to be the name for our pink sheep, and we need to make a new anvil really quickly. But the name suggestion that we're going to go with for our pink sheep is Momo, which means peach in Japanese. Thank you to everybody that gave me name suggestions. I can't wait to bring Momo into their new pink sheep pagoda. Now the other thing I want to do is since we only have sadly now those two sniffers, I really want to go breed them up before they cause more chaos and before we lose any more. So we're going to take a quick pick stop and we're going to breed up our sniffers. Hi guys, is it just you two? Okay, good. I have two of you. Okay, let's breed you guys up. One seed for you, and one seed for you. Oh, look at you. Oh, you're so cute. And I have an egg. <gasps> yes, we've got an egg. Okay. The sniffer population <laughs> can continue to grow and hopefully will be more successful this time. So uh, let's just plant our friend down right there. And hopefully we've cleaned up all the spots that would potentially uh, get them to suffocate in a wall so that everyone will be safe that is in here from now on. And next, we are going to bring our lovely sheep friend over to their new barn area. So I'm going to use a piece of wheat to lure them and hopefully this will work with no problems. Okay, come on in, Momo. Look at this. What do you think of your new place? Isn't it great? It's just perfect for you, isn't it? Yes, I figured it would be. Okay, they're in. Momo is in their new house. And there we go. Momo, welcome to your pink sheep pagoda. And you wanted this the whole time, so you can have it.
Now, one last thing we're going to do is I need to have a bed in here. And one thing that I noticed, I didn't even realize I had this feature. Is this a new feature to 1.20? Because I can take my already dyed bed and re-dye it. I, I didn't think that was an option. So it's probably a mod that I just didn't know I had for quality of life. But nonetheless, I will take it because that's a really cool feature. And we'll just put the bed right there. Perfect. Oh, look at this. We've got our little friend inside their pagoda. Oh, I love it. You know, I probably should sleep just because it is almost night. Um, excuse me, Momo. I need to sleep. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, oh, gosh. Um, yep. Okay. Little sheep fuzzy tail in my face. Not exactly what I wanted to sleep with, but you know, it's fine. I love this so much. And I have not really built with a lot of pink in my world, like at all, especially with the pink cherry wood. I've really not been using it a whole lot. I've mainly been sticking to this new bamboo texture, but I think this looks really nice in our area. And super zoomed out, you can kind of just see how I think it still looks really nice in our area. We have the pink trees and it kind of just looks like it's a pink tree as well. But I think our area is looking so good so far, but we have a long ways to go and a lot of fun adventures ahead of us. And speaking of, I want to go on an adventure to collect some more obsidian because I was thinking that my inventory is super cluttered. And one easy way to solve this now that I have Silk Touch is if we go grab some obsidian and make ourselves our very first ender chest because I can just put blocks in there to save some inventory space. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, and we've gone to this lava pool before. So we're just going to come around to this edge here. And this time we're actually going to, instead of taking lava, splash it out. And I'm sorry to the speedrunners once again. And now we mine obsidian for a long time. All right, we have 15 obsidian and I feel like that's enough for now, but I am just going to leave this water bucket here so that when we dig up more obsidian, we can use that again. So now we just go back and make ourselves an ender chest. Next, we grabbed an ender pearl, a blaze rod, and made some blaze powder, made the eye of ender, and the ender chest. And there we go! <gasps> Yay! We can put stuff in here and have space! Oh my gosh. Literally, this is gonna be so nice. I just... Sometimes in the early game, I forget that you can make ender chests as soon as you've gone to the nether. I just always assume it's like a later game thing because I just, well, I forget that you can make them, but they're seriously so helpful for saving space. So I am very excited to have this. Now, one other thing that I wanna work on is going over and visiting our villagers again, but this time doing something with that zombie villager. Now, even though we have a few villagers over here, the rest of our villagers that have some of the good armor enchants are still over at the village, especially Proc 4 and Feather Falling 4, which I don't have Feather Falling on my boots, and my other armor doesn't really have good protection on it. So we're gonna go change that right now. All right, hello villagers. Oh, and look at this, we had five villagers and 12 apples, so plenty of leftovers. Now, I'm pretty sure somewhere, I think inside this house, I left a bunch of potions. Perfect, okay, so we just need, well, not even five of these because they're all gonna be uh, grabbed together, but we do first need to get this one to get uh, biting all of them. So we're gonna just spend some time reconfiguring this, well, uh, well, it's, it's kind of a box cage thing, so. We're gonna just reconfigure this and then make our little zombie friend bite our other friends. Now my main concern is having our zombie villager get attacked by an iron golem. So we are gonna create a little ceiling roof on top of where our villagers are so that they are not able to have a golem spawn in their same space because we're gonna make it a little bit smaller than where an iron golem could actually fit in it. So. We're just gonna take some of our jungle wood here, make some slabs, put it over top of their little roof system, and I think this should work. We'll, we'll see.
Are you for real? Your hitbox reached? Do you know what I was trying to do with that zombie villager? Do you? One moment, guys. back sir i did not think that they could go through fences that is a rip i thought for sure that would work so hang on guys i'm not done with you and i'm making your pen even safer against things like that First, we trapped them in belts so they wouldn't keep infecting each other. Once we caught them all, it was time to splash them with weakness and force feed them apples. And we've got five villagers ready to give us cheaper prices. So I'm just gonna wait for them to cure and then we'll see what their prices are at. I really need a good way to get a bunch of emeralds. So while these guys are curing, I think we're gonna go try to get a bunch of sticks collected so I can trade emeralds to our stick guys. All right, let's check on our friends here. Oh, don't tell me they just got each other again. Oh no, that's exactly what happened. Just look at me. Okay. Be aggroed on me, don't hurt the villager. Oh my, oh my, I was trying to hit the pixel block. <gasps> oh, that's so sad. I'm just struggling, you know? Do you ever have that happen where you're just like, you just do something wrong with the villagers and you just, yeah. Um, I'm glad that at least once these guys get cured that I'll have all of my librarians. I do need to breed them up again, so we'll make sure that we get some extra wool so we can get some more beds, but... <sighs> but I'm just gonna wait here until these guys uh, transform. Okay, so our Fletcher transformed, and now it's at down to 20 for their stick trade, which is pretty good. Now the next thing I want to do is go and grab a weakness potion and get these two cured. Oh, excuse me, sorry. But let's go like this. I just need to make sure they stay aggroed on me. So once again, we found ourselves curing villagers and this time we waited for them to cure so they'd stay aggroed on us and not keep infecting each other again. All right, we have both of our villagers. We've got protection down to one. That's incredible. <gasps> and feather falling down to one. I mean, <laughs> They were literally continuously, I guess, reinfected like three times. So I'm sure these trades were much higher, but because they kept infecting each other back to back, we are now at one book. Next, we wanted to start breeding up some villagers. So we laid down some beds and then gave them a bunch of bread, but we began to realize they weren't picking up the bread and they weren't breeding. And then it hit me. Villagers will not be able to pick up bread and breed because of me turning mob griefing off when I started this world. Hindsight 2020, uh, doing things a little differently next time. 
So we instead pivoted over to collecting our emeralds and starting to collect up and buy the books off of the villagers that we needed to improve our armor. Adding proc 4 to our chest plate, then our leggings, and we had a full set of proc 4 armor. Then we added Featherfall 4 to our boots and did a jump test, which didn't lose us any hearts. With that success, we headed on home. I've just been talking with Momo, our little pink sheep friend here, and we realized that I've been building in this world for over 600 days. 643 to be exact. And somehow in those 643 days, I've managed to live out of this for my storage room. And today we are gonna change that. We are going to work on building a brand new storage room and we're going to put it right up on this hill and then we're gonna move these trees and make a cute little bridge to get us across to it. I've already started collecting some of the resources from a live stream and I also want to make a bamboo farm because I build out of bamboo so much. And last but not least, we're going to name our sniffers from the comments you guys left. Don't forget to leave a like on this video and check if you're subscribed. Now, the first goal and project of today is going to be the bamboo farm. Now, on a previous live stream, we did work on this. Oh, that one was backwards, nice. But since we did not finish this and I want to uh, have the bamboo farm working, we're just going to grab the supplies that we're going to need to finish this off. And then we're gonna put a cozy little build on top of it so that this doesn't just look like a uh, absolute mess. So I'm going to start working on this and struggling with redstone while you enjoy the time lapse. So we started tearing down some of what we had built previously because I realized I needed more space for the bamboo farm than what I initially built. Once we had the dimensions correct, we started building up the bamboo farm, getting all of the pistons and the observers in their proper places, and then we set up the blocks that the redstone would be sitting on to make the farm actually work. And then we did a test which successfully worked, so I knew I could just replicate things to finish out the build. Once the collection system for the farm was working, we began cleaning up the farm to make it look a little bit nicer, replacing the temporary blocks with some of the stone bricks under the pistons and on the sides of the farm. Once we got all the stone bricks in place, we added the bamboo into the farm so we could start automatically collecting the bamboo for the first time in our world. Next, I grabbed some cactus that we had growing by our cow crusher and planted some of it back to continue growing, since I did want to have some of the cactus be turned into green dye and then dye some of the glass so that we could see into the bamboo farm and watch the farm working while also not losing any bamboo in the process. All right, and the last bits of glass are going over the top, so we're able to see the bamboo farm at work from above here. I think it will be so nice. And then we have these little shoots that we can just come down the ladder here and then we can easily access our bamboo as we need it and make the blocks of bamboo with the crafting table there and it's the same thing on the other side i'm probably gonna change this just so that when we actually like have the build you know we're actually uh having our chests be in the build we don't have to be outside of the build to access it but now is the fun part the cozy building first we started towering up using dark oak to create the pillars and corners for the build once we had all the dark oak pillars in place we began adding in the made building palette for the bamboo farm, which was the green bamboo block. From there, we added the dark oak planks as the floor, adding some counters on the sides, and then I realized I had to move one of the walls one block over to make the dimensions even again. And then it was time to start working on the roof of the build. There we go, our bamboo farm has an exterior, we've got a build, the inside is still empty, but this is what it kind of looks like. So we have our little glass ceiling so we can see through. I don't really like seeing the mangrove roof, I think I want to just use some dark oak and just kind of cover over this. 
but I do want to still be able to see through this. So what I'll probably do is just make the skylight come down to about this level is kind of my idea. But now we're just going to work on the interior and making this a cute and cozily decorated bamboo farm. And uh, I, I do need to make a way to get down to the farm somehow. I, yeah, so... We'll have to figure that out and see how we can make that happen. I have to like literally like find a place to get in here. So that's kind of the, the next things we're gonna be working on is just the interior of this place. All right, our bamboo farm is all done and decorated. And here's what we have. I think my favorite piece of this room are these bamboo accent walls. I think they're so cute. And it really just fits the vibe of, you know, it being a bamboo farm very well. And we also have our canopy bed as a centerpiece with lots of bookshelves and barrels. We've got the little composters with the leaves as well, but I think the canopy bed roof is just the coolest thing ever. I feel like you'd call it a canopy. I don't know what else you'd call it. Let me know in the comments. But then from above, we have our skylight. I think I may add a second layer of glass here. Not totally sure. So this is just here to kind of remind me that that was the idea that I had. But then on this back wall here, we've just got lots of little pots full of bamboo. We've got more chiseled bookshelves to add books in here. And then we've got a furnace and a crafting table, but I think this is so cute. These bamboo walls are definitely the best part of it. What a nice little feature, accent wall. I absolutely love it. Now the way to get down to our farm is right through here, so that's why there was just a missing piece of bamboo growing, but it's not decorated like at all. It's just green to kind of fit the vibes, but I didn't really feel like doing a whole lot down here because all I'm gonna do is grab bamboo and then walk my way back up the ladder. So so it's not like I like need this to be a certain way. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. Now that we're done with the bamboo build, I wanna take a break from building and we're gonna go name our sniffers from your comments. Let's go and sleep really quickly. And then we're going to grab our name tags for our little sniffers. Ah, all right, a good night of sleep, some food. How's it going, Soda? How are you today? I hope you're good. Thanks for keeping an eye on our place. All right. So I took out some of my name tags and I put them in an ender chest. So we have three name tags and I'm pretty sure we have three sniffers. So let's get some names going. First sniffer is going to be named Suika, which means a watermelon in Japanese. Our second sniffer is going to be named Ichigo, which means strawberry in Japanese. And our third sniffer is going to be named Takara, which means treasure in Japanese. Now, thank you to everyone that left name suggestions for our little sniffers. I loved looking through the names that you guys picked. It was super fun and also hard to pick the final three names for our sniffers, but it had to be done. So let's go see our little friends again. Hello, my sniffers. How are you doing? Hello, all three of you are still alive. Love to see it. All right, so we have Ichigo, we've got Tsuika, and we've got Takara. So we've got Strawberry, we've got Watermelon, and we've got Treasure. And with our little sniffer friends all named, I think that is a great kind of addition to our little episode here. But it is time to continue on with today's plans, which is tackling the biggest project of them all. I need a storage room because I'm running out of space in my chests. Now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I do need to put these chests away. So I'm gonna quickly move these chests back to our storage area, and then we'll start clearing out the space to build our new storage pagoda. 
So, chest by chest, we began moving over all the different blocks and items back into our original storage area. I probably will still use the smaller storage area here for some things, maybe more the important items I'll keep in my starter hose, kind of like just keeping the treasures close, but everything else I'll eventually move into our new storage pagoda. All right, now, as far as building and clearing out space for our little storage pagoda, we're gonna create our little build on top of this hill here. So we just need to work on flattening out the area so that it's, uh, well, manageable. So we're taking down the tree, we're clearing out these mini trees, which I don't know why the jungle biomes do this. It's literally just one log underneath all those leaves, but then it's just everywhere. So we're gonna be working on clearing out a 17 long by 13 wide space. And then we'll start building once this is all cleared out. So enjoy the time-lapse. Just like that, we've got a cleared out space, primed and ready for building. So this is where the staircase is gonna go that I want to lead us from our starter home all the way up to our storage build. And we're making it 17 wide. Uh, let's just see what, let's do some blocks actually. Right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And this is the entrance into the space. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Draw our line again. And here we have it in a free cam. This is what we got. Our entrance is going to be pushed out one block to kind of have our entrance kind of stand out a little bit. And then the rest of it will be pushed back one block. But I think this is gonna look really nice. So without further ado, let's get working on a time-lapse building up our storage pagoda. All right, so the exterior of our build is complete. We've got chests. I've started to kind of just set up some shelving in here. We've started adding in some of the chests, but we just need to fill this space and get all of our chests in place and all of our decorations. So let's do some decorating, shall we? So in this front entryway, I thought it would be really cute just to have a bunch of little pots and then we can put some different flowers. We'll also put some bamboo in here just to keep with our theme. So we'll put bamboo in these ones. Then we'll add chests over here. So that's filled out perfectly. And then I also want to create some walls, kind of like separators, like what I have here. So we're just gonna finish these walls really quickly. So 
So with the different chest segments, I want to have, say, like stones in here, our wood types in here, leaves, flowers, greenery, and dirt in here. Have maybe sand, terracotta's clays over here, the mob drops, just all the different segments. It's going to be nice and organized, and this place will no longer be empty. But let's do a nice little transition so when you guys come back in, it'll be a brand new space. And it's done. Look at that. Oh, I'm so happy with how this turned out. But right inside the door, we've got our little potted plants and bamboo. We've got our little planter boxes with leaves throughout the whole area. We've got some more chests and barrels and chiseled bookshelves. We put leaves on top of the ceiling to just really make it all feel very overgrown. Then we've got our first segment of chests and kind of a furnace a smelting a workstation over here. And I think this looks so good. We put moss carpet throughout just to add some more green overgrown vibes. And then over on our right, we've got our little bed, a little spot to get some extra crafting done. I also snuck a little crafting table in that corner. But then we've got more chests here, same over here and over here. And this is what we have for our storage room. And of course, you know, I had to uh, stick our little spore blossom in here to get the particle vibes. And I love this so much. Like this is so cozy for a storage room. Like I would just hang out in here. I love it. And as far as the outside, I just added some of the little pitcher plants along the outside in little planter boxes. We've got some bamboo as well growing next to them with some glow berries and lanterns. And then I also used dark oak slabs with some mangrove and some leaves to kind of edge our little path. And I think the path looks so cute. I also put little uh, bamboo fields on either side and I, I love it. I think this is so, so cute. It's a great addition to our area. And looking in free cam, this is what it looks like from further away. I think this looks so good and it honestly is just helping our area come together so well. I absolutely love it. If I go all the way zooming out, we have all of our little builds from our sniffer sanctuary to our storage room, all the way to our iron and skelly farms. Our area is looking so cozy, guys. I'm so happy with the progress. Now, even though I have officially decorated this on the exterior and the interior, I kind of forgot about completely decorating the exterior of our little bamboo farm. And it, it looks, uh, pretty sad so we're going to decorate this little build on the exterior and add some leaves onto the roof and I also forgot to add leaves onto this roof so we're going to add some leaves onto this roof and then actually decorate the thing that I was going to and uh, then we'll see how those look afterwards with an aerial view And with an aerial view of our storage room, just some leaves honestly adds so much to a build. I love it and it looks so cute. Next, we moved on to decorating the bamboo farm, starting with grabbing some of the bamboo from our farm to decorate with. Our farm is already producing a good amount and I'm super happy we have this in our area now. We next created some bamboo planter boxes to line the exterior and really fit the theme of this build being our bamboo farm. We then bone mealed around our area to fill the blank ground with some more life and texture. This is a super easy terraforming hack I always like to do. It was then time to add leaves to the roof to finish out the decorating of the build. With the leaves done, I decided to add a cherry blossom tree to the area just to add some additional color and particle effects to our little area here. Then I added a spore blossom and some lanterns to finish it all off. We've got the leaves on the roof. We use lots of glow berries and lanterns on the corner posts. 
We used the vines and we made, of course, the bamboo be the little accent walls again. And I used the mud. And that's pretty much what it's like all the way around. I also added some small and big drip leaf along with a bunch of lily pads just kind of dotted around the edge. And I think it looks really nice. And I hid all of the torches underneath the moss carpets. Added some flowers and a lovely little cherry blossom tree. And it's, it's so cute. I love it so much. Now that we have officially finished decorating both our storage room and our bamboo farm, there's something that we have not talked about yet in this world. And that is going to the end and fighting the dragon and getting an elytra. So I next want to grab a water bucket, some potions, and a jack-o'-lantern to prepare for said dragon fight. Once I make my pets look cute, I, I they must look cute. So we're just going to do a little bit of decorating along the edge here. It's fine. I just want this to look a little bit more put together for some path blocks and using coarse dirt is probably my favorite way to do so except I uh, I definitely need more of it but you know it's it's a start it, it's looking a little bit better but while we're over here we're gonna go over and see what we have in our potion area with our blaze rods I'm okay perfect 16 next we're gonna brew up some slow fall potions and some strength potions so let's collect supplies for those and uh I also need to google the recipes because uh sometimes I forget and I just want to make sure I have it right so for our slow fall potions we need our phantom membranes I'm also going to grab some extra glass for bottles and I'm gonna grab some extra redstone dust now we go back down we grab a nether ward and we start by putting a that in here to make us the start of our slow fall potion then we're grabbing our phantom membrane to turn it into a slow fall potion now we have a potion of slow falling for a minute and 30 but adding redstone will make this longer so we definitely want that for the fight and there we go four minutes of slow falling so we're going to create more of these glass bottles and then fill these up so that i can make some more potions We'll do another round of our slow falling potions and then we'll switch to making our strength potions. And in the meantime, I'm going to put our slow fall potions in this chest. And I honestly will probably just temporarily take some of this stuff out because I don't really need all of this extra stuff in here right now. And with the awkward potion now in effect, we will turn that into a slow falling once again. We're adding some more redstone to make it last a little bit longer. Next, we're using the nether wart to make another awkward potion and then using the blaze powder to make the strength potion after that. We've got our awkward potion, so let's add in the blaze powder. And we have redstone dust making it last a total of eight minutes. And since I don't think I'll need even more than one of these, I think slow falling and strength should be good on the potion front. Next, we're going to grab ourselves a jack-o'-lantern, a water bucket, and some blocks for pillaring. I love having an ender chest. It just is so much more convenient to just have like an extra little chest of things just ready to go. But let's see, I need a water bucket. Perfect, there's a water bucket. Add that into our ender chest. We'll use a bunch of stone because we have plenty to be our pillaring blocks, so that should be good. I should also make a spare bed just in case and let's make it a cyan bed and then we'll grab some blocks. There we go. Make a bed and make it cyan and we'll use that as our traveling adventure bed and we should have perfect. We've got a pumpkin and now we just take our pumpkin, grab our shears, shear our pumpkin and there's our little friend we'll be wearing for the fight. Of course, I always have a texture pack so I don't see the uh, pumpkin mask and for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, wearing a jack-o'-lantern head gives you this when you look around. But you don't, you can't see it on my face, but in first person, you see it. So we're definitely gonna fix that before we go to the end and go exploring. But the other thing we don't have a whole lot of is ender pearls. That will be for a future episode. We've been surviving in this world for almost 700 days, but there is something that I have not done yet, and that is the dragon fight. Now you may have seen people slay the dragon with netherite or diamond tools, or maybe even gold just for a bit 
bit of a challenge, but have you ever seen someone kill the dragon with just a stick of bamboo? Because today, my friends, that's what we're going to attempt to do. Because we're living in a bamboo jungle and because I just made this beautiful bamboo farm, I thought it would be kind of fun and a bit of a challenge if we tried to kill the dragon using a piece of bamboo here instead of regular weapons. But before we can do any of that, we need to prepare for this fight, locate the stronghold, and activate the portals to the end. But first things first, we need to collect up some supplies for this fight. So we're going to grab a water bucket, bed, boat, carved pumpkin, and some potions. And instead of using random pillaring blocks, I wanna try using scaffolding for the first time. Because usually when I use pillaring blocks, I end up just having a giant pillar. I get knocked off of it. I don't get those pillaring blocks back. So what we're going to do is add to our little stash here. We're going to be adding in the scaffolding instead of having usual pillaring blocks. I am bringing some of these just in case, but I first need to clear out the ender chest that I had full of other items. So we're just going to put these things back in here for now. Maybe I'll bring a golden apple just in case, but for the most part, we've got most of everything that we'll need. We've got the water bucket, we've got a bed, we've got slow fall potions, and we've got strength potions, a carved pumpkin to wear. I'm bringing my brush just in case we find something along the way, but we need to grab a bow and I also need to collect the most important thing, which is ender pearls, which means looking for endermen to uh, to kill and hopefully not die. While I do have a few ender pearls, this is not going to get us far. So we're going to go out hunting for endermen and I'm probably going to go to the nether to do it, which might be interesting, but hopefully not. Let's get the more difficult task out of the way and go into the nether to get some ender pearls. So let's take some pillowing blocks with us. We've got a boat in here, so let's grab our little boat. I don't like that you have a crossbow. Slightly concerning, not gonna lie. Okay, I see an enderman. I'm staring at the enderman, but because I am too far away, they do not see me. I, I will take that. Um, interesting. Okay, guess we have to get closer to our little friend. Hello, sir. Can you please go in there? Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Can you just go in the boat? Yes, thank you very much. And boat for you. Thank you very much. Ender pearls should be enough. Having 20 ender pearls is probably a little much for going to the stronghold and opening up the portal, but I have plans for the other ender pearls that we don't use today. Now it's time to make all of our ender pearls, and we have all of our blaze rods down here. So let's go and get a bunch of blaze powder and make a bunch of ender eyes. With the nether trip out of the way, the next thing we need to do is get sugarcane because I want to get a bunch of rockets together for when we do find the wings in the end. So we've been collecting some sugarcane down here by our edge. The other thing we need to grab is mending and unbreaking from our little librarians. So we grabbed our mending book, an unbreaking three book, combined them on the anvil, and we next wanted to make a banner to put on our shield for the dragon fight. So we set down our loom, grabbed a line banner and added black dye to it, and then chose the masoned pattern. Added green dye to that, and then again chose the masoned pattern. Added white dye to that and chose the pally pattern. And lastly added white dye and chose the bend sinister pattern. 
So if I show you guys, this is gonna be what it looks like. So if you wanna make this in your own world, those are the steps. And look at this, we've got a shield matching us living in our little bamboo jungle. Now it is time to go out on our adventure. I'm very nervous, but also excited. But let's see where our first ender eye goes. Okay, we have our direction. Let's get going. Okay, here we go. We've made it, guys. Look at that. I spy. And if any of you are wanting the coordinates for this place, that is what you can write down if you are playing in this seat as well. Let's start looking around. Okay, so this is the direction that we came from, and I want to make sure I remember this so that we know how to get out of here, but let's just start looking around. I think I just saw one of the libraries, so let's go look in here. I'm gonna put my shield up just in case there's anything. Oh, okay. So we bridged through the library, checked the first chest and found a eye trim and a book. In the second, we found a second eye trim and two more enchanted books. And of course we couldn't resist taking a bunch of bookshelves with us. After grabbing some bookshelves, we left that library and looked to our side and found the portal room. Then we quickly filled the lava in so we would be safer. If you guys are playing along and want to know where this is, this is where you can find it. And now we just get to put the eyes in. I'm glad that I brought a lot of eyes because they don't really have a lot of options. Okay, here we go guys. And just like that, the portal is open. We're one step closer to fighting that dragon. I am a little bit nervous, but then again, I always am nervous for the dragon fight. We're gonna put on our carved pumpkin, and we have the most important piece, the bamboo that's going to kill the ender dragon. So I guess here goes nothing. We're going into the end. I've got my pumpkin on, we've got our ender chest with us, and all that we have left to do is hop on in here and see what is before us and we jump we're loading <gasps> oh we're at the end and i'm scared okay here we are there's the dragon okay whoo now i'm glad i brought the pillaring blocks now we just have to be very careful and hopefully get out of the way so that they don't get their dragon's breath on me quite yet hi dragon don't mind me i'm just gonna come up over here oh but i will grab your dragon's breath let's grab some of this dragon's breath really quickly Ooh, nice i have a feeling i'm gonna get hit again yep all right here we go let's start towering up and we're gonna drink some slow falling now and we'll start towering up And there we go, and we'll get this one, perfect, let's get this one, awesome, can I get this one a little bit lower, got it, 
Let's try to get this one really far away. A little bit too low. There we go. Okay, and now we can just float our way down, collect up all of our scaffolding, and grab the other ones that are on the other pillars. Pretty simple and straightforward. This is actually like way nicer. I like love using the scaffolding trick. Let's see if I can get this. Perfect, awesome. I'm actually going a lot quicker than I usually do. Move out of the way of the dragon's breath. And let's grab this one, perfect. Wow, I'm actually going very fast in comparison to how fast I normally do this. Okay, the dragon's on the other side, so this helps me out quite a bit. And then just go like so. Okay, and this is the last one. Now, I think I'm just gonna try to float down here and get a little bit closer. Okay, so let's just first see if we can get underneath her. And I wanna see how much we, oh. <gasps> that is scuffed, I don't like that. Why is it doing this? Oh my gosh, that is terrifying. Oh. Okay, well that was an absolutely terrifying glitch. I did not like that one bit. Okay, you're gonna perch? Even better? Okay. Woo, that was a very long yeet. Oh my goodness, but we have slow falls, so we're totally okay. You're playing a little bit hard to get, but you know, I understand. I am trying to whack you with a piece of bamboo and I'm sure you don't really like that, but can you just come down here? Are you gonna perch yet? I think you're gonna perch, so we'll drink our strength potion. We've got strength for eight minutes, so this should be good. Are you gonna perch? Yes. You're perching, perfect. No, 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 don't do that. All right. Oop, gotta get out of the dragon's breath, okay. Gotta come in from behind her. Okay, we're getting close. We've almost got her, guys. We've almost got her. We're killing the dragon with a piece of bamboo. We did it! Look at that! We got the dragon, and I used a piece of bamboo to kill the dragon. Look at that XP and the egg. Oh, I almost died, too. That would have been interesting. Oh my gosh, I was on half a heart. I didn't even realize. We did it. We got the Ender Dragon killed with a piece of bamboo representing our area, living in our bamboo jungle. But look at that. Oh my gosh. And there's our prize. We quickly covered up the portal home so the egg wouldn't fall through. And then we gave the egg a good boop and used the torch to help us pick it up. And there we go. It's the next generation look at that we got the egg oh my gosh i am so happy the last time i fought the dragon i actually died at least once and this time we didn't die at all and i would count that as a huge win for me when we went over to the end gateway we realized it was suspended above the void so we very carefully made ourselves a staircase up to it and we also decided to create a box around it to make sure that we were super safe and wouldn't fall off Okay, and we pearl in, remote getaway, okay, and we're really safe. I'm marking the screenshot of where I am right now so I know where to go back to, but okay, we are in the end. We are looking for a ship, so let's get exploring. Many, many minutes later. Okay, there's a ship finally. We are so, so far away. I feel like I've been traveling for so long. But we have a ship in sight, so now we just need to make our way over. All right, we're under the ship pretty much, and luckily none of the pieces are gonna fall into the void, so let's just start scaffolding our way all the way up into the end ship, and then quickly, 
The city at the end of the game. We did it. Yay. Okay. We need to make it over before Mr. Growly gargle face uh, tries to get us. We started attacking the shulker that was guarding our elytra, and once we took care of them, we went to go grab our new wings. We've got wings now! Yay! With wings acquired, we looted the two chests on the ship and then realized we forgot an anvil, so we couldn't enchant our elytra, nor did I bring wood or a crafting table if we did find enough iron. Nice. So we kept looting the ship, grabbing the dragon head, a few end rods, and we started attacking some of the shulkers in hopes of collecting a few shulker shells. Okay, and now we're going to try flying. So let's go for a fly. Look at this. Oh, this feels so good to have wings. Oh, I love this so much. Once we had four shulker shells, we called it good and headed back to the safety of our base area. Wow, look at our area. It's so cute from the air and we have the wings so we can really enjoy it. Wow, look at this. Absolutely beautiful. And we finally have wings. Oh, and it feels so good. The next thing that we're gonna work on is putting away all the goodies we were able to find. And then we're going to start clearing out space to start building our dragon's temple. As far as where we're going to be building our dragon's temple, I want to put it right on top of this hill right here. And that way we can kind of look over everything that we have. Our dragon's temple will be towering over everything. And I think it's going to look super cool. But we are going to need to make a pretty winding staircase to make it all the way around the mountain and up to the build. So what I'm thinking we'll do is we'll still use this bridge and we'll make a winding curvy path go all the way around the mountain, kind of like a spiral. And then we'll have our build sitting on top. So we do have a lot of terraforming to do. Now, before I start terraforming up this mountain, I need your guys' help to name our little piece of bamboo that we killed the dragon with. I still can't I can't believe I literally used a piece of bamboo and killed the dragon with it. Drinking the strength potion was a super helpful thing to do. It made the dragon get killed a lot faster, but I want to name this piece of bamboo since it was the thing that helped us kill the dragon and it is going to be held in a special place in our dragon temple, kind of like a museum for the artifacts. So let me know in the comments below what name we should give our piece of bamboo that helped us slay the dragon. And while you guys are thinking of names for our little special bamboo piece, I'm gonna start terraforming this. And just like that, our cozy little path is completed. Now, if anybody likes long plays, I did actually make a long play of the path progress of this whole thing being made. So if you enjoy long plays, you can go watch that on my channel after this video, if that's your vibe. It is time for us to start working on the actual build that's gonna go up top here. And it's going to be our dragon's temple where we're gonna showcase all the items we got in the end, like the egg, the dragon's head, the bamboo piece that we killed the dragon with, and a few other different artifacts from the end. And I have started collecting up some resources for building this. So you can tell our main color palette is going to be mangrove, dark oak, and we are using quartz. So I guess all we have left to do is take a nap and get building this up.
And just like that, we have the shell of our dragon's temple all done. Now, as far as layers on the inside, this is what I have so far. We are going to put the dragon egg on this pedestal right here. I'm thinking I almost want to have some end crystals encased here. We're going to put some like clear glass. So it's kind of like they are the protective alarm system if someone tries to take the egg. They go off and it kills the person. And I mean, it could kill the egg, but you know, we're, we're gonna go with it just being the protective thing. And the second layer is where we're going to s stick our dragon head. And I think I've seen a few different people use end rods and then chains to kind of create like a katana. So I'm going to set this up so that our dragon's head has the katana going through it just to, you know, remind us that we slayed the dragon. And we are going to put our special dragon slaying piece of bamboo next to the dragon as well. Since these rooms look very sterile right now, I'm going to start doing some decorating of this place. And I think this is gonna be such a great addition to our area. Now the next thing I want to add in is the end crystals and I am a little bit nervous to try this because I could blow everything up that I've built so far. So we are going to be very careful in doing this. This is the block where the end crystal will actually sit and we're just going to mirror this on the other side as well. So putting in some obsidian right there. And then I like the idea of having some of the end stone around this, just so we can actually kind of grow up some of the purple little block things. And I think it'll look really cool. We'll see how it actually looks, but I'm just going to add some in on the sides here. And we're going to add some of the end stone around where the egg is going to be as well, just to kind of remind it of, you know, it's home. Next, we're going to go flying and go and grab what we need to actually make the end crystals. Now we're smelting up some glass, but while we're waiting for that, we're going to grab our two ghast tears, two eyes of ender. And now we have enough glass to allow us to make one of the end crystals. Ooh, this is scary. This is basically a bomb in my inventory and we're just gonna not click on it. We're going to be very careful. And we've got enough glass to make our second end crystal. Ooh, it's so scary. First things first, we add the glass panes to keep all of the explodiness inside the glass and keep me from accidentally clicking on it. Now we're gonna add in the chorus flowers and let's put one right there and one right there. I think that will look really pretty. We're putting a live end crystal. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna keep this out of my inventory and now just don't right click on it. Okay, it is cased in glass and that looks so cool. Just adding some more magical elements to different aspects of this place. I think it will look really cool when we're all done with this, but I already like this a lot. This is already looking really cool. And we've got more books to add into our chiseled bookshelves that we're just going to scatter around. And if we ever need to grab extra books for enchanting or anything, we can just stop by in here and grab a bunch of books. Adding in the chain so that the katana has kind of a little handle there, just like that. And we're adding the dragon egg right there. And I use the end rods to kind of make it look like there are bars kind of protecting, kind of like a jail cell to keep everybody away from the dragon egg. But I think this is looking so, so cool. Now we add in the chorus fruit. And last but not least, the end crystal. And we've got two end crystals all set up to protect the dragon egg. Now, I would say this temple is pretty much done. I just want to first add some leaves to the top of this, so we're gonna do that right now. Okay. 
And just like that, we have a bunch of pretty leaves decorating the roof of our little temple, and I love it. I also love how you can see the end crystals bobbing up and down. It just adds so much life to the area. We recently got wings and now the sky is the limit. Technically, uh, build height is the limit, but we'll ignore that for now. The biggest issue that I'm having is I'm constantly running out of rockets. And as fun as killing creepers is, I would rather have a farm do that for me instead. So today we're going to be building both a creeper farm and a sugarcane farm and placing these underground beneath a cozy little gazebo and koi pond. Don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already and let's get into it. Now, as far as location where we're going to make this koi pond, gazebo, gunpowder farm, sugarcane farm area, it's gonna be right here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to kind of carve this out a little bit more and fill this up with water. And then in the middle on stilts is where we're going to add the gazebo. And then under the ground, we're going to build the gunpowder farm and the sugarcane farm components around it. So we're first going to terraform this area and then go collect some resources. Now I, oh, freely, I will take that. Uh, thank you very much, I appreciate it. So what I was gonna say was my idea is down this little chute is where we're going to create kind of like a little tunnel. So we're gonna use blue glass, possibly the other light blue glass, and just kind of create a little like tunnel here so that we have kind of like a secret entrance that gets us into our little area here. And then we're just going to make a little drop shoot that brings us all the way down where we need to be. And I think I just, I'm drowning myself, it's fine, okay. Oh my gosh. Well, that was embarrassing and I need to be more careful of that. So then what we're going to have is a little ladder way and we're going to just try to disguise the glass underneath here. I might make this be just clear glass, but as far as in the water goes, having the dark blue glass, I think works the best from a distance, but that's the idea. So since we have most of this top area done, we just need to do some final decor, add some leaves and things. I wanna start working on the actual farms themselves. So we're gonna go collect all the supplies that we need to make both the gunpowder farm and the sugarcane farm. And I will leave the tutorials that I'm going to be following in the video description so check those out if you're interested in either of them i also totally forgot we have shulker shells from going to the end so let's make 
our first two shulker boxes. <gasps> Oh my gosh, this always feels so good to finally have extra storage we can carry around. Now let's fill these with all of our stuff. And honestly, I do really like to color my shulker boxes. So I want to do a green and a light blue, not because they mean anything right now, but I just, I just like the colors. So pretty. Okay, let's fill these up. All right, I think we have everything in our shulker box for both our gunpowder farm and our sugarcane farm. And I want to set up a dropper system to move all of our items around. So we're going to work on that. But I think we have everything we'll need. So we are going to grab all of our items and our under chest and move over to the build site. Okay, so as far as what we're doing with the gunpowder farm, all we really need to do is go down probably like four more little layers. We're just gonna start digging out this hole for the gunpowder farm and then we're going to build in our sugarcane farm around it on the outside edges. And the entire gunpowder farm is all set to go. So now we just remove torches very quickly. I'm going to have my bow and arrow ready just in case any of the creepers start to spawn sooner than I was hoping that they would. And we should get creepers starting to spawn as soon as I start removing torches. We'll see if we get any creepers. I need to now go pillar up into the sky with scaffolding to make the AFK box. So let's go flying around. And if anyone is wondering how our bamboo farm is working, it is working very well. It is mostly overflowing. So this has been a great farm and it's not even that large of a farm, but this is working super well. I'm just trying to condense our stash and then make some more scaffolding with the bamboo we have here. All right, and we made it. We are on 64, so let's just go to 63 and then we just make our little temporary box. I'm not doing anything like super fancy to this. I literally just want it to be a nice little platform for us to be able to do a little AFK test because I don't even know if I made the farm correctly. So we're first gonna test before we make anything pretty up here. So I'm just gonna make our little AFK box. We'll AFK for a little bit, and then we will find out if I did this right or not. And using a little bit of free cam, look at this, we already have it working. <gasps> I've never made a farm like this, but look at this. We've got all of our little snow golems getting these little creepers. Let's do a little 10 minute AFK session and see what we get in 10 minutes. Okay, my timer is going off. Let's go down and see how much we can get. Also, yes, I do plan to fix this. And I did add a resource pack that kind of creates a connective grass block because normally you just see like this little bit of dirt on the side. 
but I did just add a connective grass resource pack and it already is making such a huge difference. But let's go see what we can get for our gunpowder. Oh, I'm so excited. This is literally so exciting. I've never done this style of gunpowder farm before, so I'm really curious to see how it compares to what I've done previously. But let's go down here and check what we have. All right, put a stack and four. And, oh, okay, so like two stacks. Okay, that's good. Two stacks in 10 minutes. I mean, two stacks is already helping me out a ton, so I will gladly take that. But let's take our gunpowder with us now, because I want to make some more rockets, because I only have 20. And then the next thing we're going to work on is making our sugarcane farm. For me, it was more important to get rockets, because it's a whole lot easier to just manually grow sugarcane than to try to, uh, you know, find creepers and uh, farm creepers. But if we're looking at the layout of what we have going on, so we've got our gunpowder creeper farm over here, and then the chests are right around down here. Now I wanna create a dropper system that's going to funnel out all of the gunpowder and push it up into a bubble. Oh, I need to fix this, you guys, hello. Ah, you're gonna drop my rates. Okay, good to know that. But what we're gonna do is create a dropper system that's going to push with a bubble elevator all of the gunpowder up into here. So we're going to put the little sugarcane farm similar where it's going to be just a little bit lower over here. Now we're just gonna work on creating a dropper system so that we can connect all of the gunpowder and we're going to shoot it up all the way to our main area. So we're just gonna work on this. It's a little bit more redstone-y than I'm used to, so I might just uh, bring you guys in once I have it done, instead of trying to, you know, have you watch me struggle with redstone. And just like that, we've got a working automatic constant dropper. So all of our gunpowder, whenever it gets put into these chests, it's going to filter down into here and get spit out. And then we just have to keep making the rest of the bubble elevator up to our room. And then we'll add in our kelp right here all the way down okay and we're going to break all of that let's put in some of our wood logs so it should shoot all the way up and perfect so they are getting stuck here so this is where we're going to make our second elevator shoot all the way up into our little room here add in a bunch of kelp all right, and we're adding in our chest system to collect all of this. So if we go like so, grab more of our ice, place that right here. And the signs should be what stops everything. So in theory, if we have this be empty and we toss some things over there, perfect. This sign stops it and everything gets collected. I'm gonna go and AFK again and see if my little dropper system is working correctly. But let's see what we get after an hour. And I did fix our little dropper item shoot, so it should work for me once I get down here. All of the gunpowder should just be right in this chest right here. <gasps> wow, look at this. Oh, and they're still coming down the chute. That's amazing. Oh my word. This is so good. This is actually working a lot better than I thought. I was a little concerned with how many bats there were, but this is, uh, this is amazing actually like genuinely so good now that we've got the item dropper this is where our gunpowder is going to be located i'm probably going to make this just be a straight up wall so that when we come down this ladder this is the room that we enter into and then we'll just be able to get to our chests right here for our gunpowder and then we'll set up the sugarcane farms over on these walls here maybe we'll dig it a little bit around 
but that is the plan. So the next thing we're gonna work on is the sugarcane farm. And if you've noticed, I have been wearing my armor because we have the cape from voting in the 2023 mob vote. And if you wanna get this too, go into your browsers where you get to pick the skin you want to wear and just edit it and add the cape to the skin you wanna play with. So if you voted for one of the mobs for the 2023 mob vote, you should have access to this cape. But if I uh, hide all of my armor, it hides the cape. So then it literally just looks like I'm like super bad, just like flying around with a, without being able to see that I have like wings on my back. So that's why I've been wearing my armor lately. Next, we moved on to decorating the collection area where the gunpowder and the sugarcane would be directed to. We set up the sugarcane farms in the wall in this room so we could show off the farm and make it a part of decorating the room, not as hidden away as our gunpowder farm is. We then added lighting and leaves around the ceiling to add those particles and we added some barrels and decorations to the shelves. We then went to go collect some fish to add to our koi pond, and of course, we grabbed a spore blossom. We came back to add the fish into their new pond and added the spore blossom for the particles above. And we officially have the sugarcane farm section of our little area all done. And I think this turned out super cute. I made just two sides of our sugarcane. If we need to build more, I'll just probably add them underground, kind of like hidden away. We've got some chests that I need to declutter from the building of it, but we've got a spruce roof. We've got bamboo for some green as our sides, kind of the same shape as the sugarcane, which is kind of why I went with those blocks as our wall palette. And then we've just got spruce for our floor. We've got some shelves, barrels for extras all the way around. And then we've got our gunpowder in here. And down in here is our sugarcane. This is what we've collected from the farm itself. This was just from me manually collecting some, but wanting it to all be in like one location. And if I go into free cam, you can see that we just have all of the hoppers kind of just funneling into that one chest from both sides. Now that the sugarcane farm is done as well, it's time to finish some of the last details of our gazebo and get some more fishies to add to the koi pond. One thing that is super cool is I added a few fish and you can see them from underneath the water because of our glass that we used. And I think that feature is just so fun, but we've got a few fish in here. We're gonna add some more. We're also going to kind of dig this out a bit more so that it looks more like it's sitting in the water, not just uh, covering up the water completely. And let's start adding in the chests. There we go. Gotta make sure those stay. There we go. We'll add some of our little azalea bushes and our dark oak sapling in there, perfect. Now I kind of want to use one of our bigger pots, so let's make one of our archery sherds and we'll replace one of the sides with the archery pot, there we go. Let's put our pot right here. Perfect, I like it. Now we're just gonna spend some time expanding our little koi pond right here, making sure the fish don't fall through, and then we'll be able to go get more of our fishies. And I thought it would be kind of fun if the fish that we put in our little koi pond here, if you guys have some fun name ideas for the fish, comment below some name ideas for these little guys, and I think it could be fun to name some of our little fishy friends. But I'm just gonna spend some time making making this look just a little bit better and making the sides look a little bit more proportionate. A few moments later. Oh my gosh, no fish. Why are you going in the hole? You can't go down there. That's not okay. I'm gonna lose all of you if you do that, you goobers. Why are you doing this? No goobers, no, don't do it. Oh my Lanta, oh my gosh. You guys, I can barely bring you anywhere. I put you in a pond and you can't even do the pond thing. Okay, I've got two fish. I think the rest went back. Now we quickly block this off so our fish don't get escape again. My goodness. All right, we've got three of you. Okay, perfect. So I had five, so I didn't lose any, but my goodness, you guys are chaotic. Now we need to go and grab more mud, except now it's way easier to go over to the mangrove swamp to collect all of the mud. I love being able to have wings finally. It's literally so, so helpful.
All right, I've got fishies. And I love how this pond is looking so far. If I hop in here so you guys can see, we use bone meal. We've got lots of seagrass, the sea pickles, amethyst, some coral. And I think it's so pretty in here. Very cozy. Perfect little koi pond for all of our fishies. Now, as far as the fish that you guys can name, there's a bunch of different colored ones. So let me try to see if I can get to some of them. So there's a like white, gray, black one that is there. There's a pink and blue one. We've got a pink and like green, maybe. We've got orange stripey one. We've got two, I think, of the cotton candy ones. We've got a green and purple. We've got a red and a white, a yellow and dark yellow. We've got another red and white, another of the little cotton candy ones, and an orange gray white one. And we've got another stripey one. And last but not least, we've got another little red one. I feel like the red and white ones were the fish I tried to collect the most of because I feel like most of the koi fish I see are the red and white ones, but I am sure there are tons of colors for little koi fish. But I think this is super fun to have all of our little fishies in here, just kind of hovering in between amethyst and sea pickles. I think it's pretty magical. Now it's just the finishing touches going around the exterior of this place to make it look all cute, cozy, and help it to blend in a little bit more with some bone meal. But then I think I also want to use some of the green carpet in here just to add kind of like a little flooring carpet. And uh, then I think we'll be in a pretty good place with this place. I'm very happy with this. Oh yeah, so cute. You can see all of our little fishes. Now let's put some leaves on the rooftop. And a little bit of leaves and path work later. This place is officially done. And I love our little gazebo and koi pond. I think I would have to say that the little koi pond is my favorite with all of the different coral blocks and fish in here. And the fact that inside the ladder, we can see into the fish pond and we can see some of our little fishy friends is also the best. But we now officially have a source of sugarcane and we have a gunpowder. So we have unlimited access to rockets so we can go just about anywhere in this world. And I think we need to go on some adventures far, far away that require more rockets. But I'm curious what you guys think would be a good adventure to test out all of our new rockets with. I'm thinking we go looking for one of those archeology span sites I still haven't found one yet. I've been surviving in this world for over 800 days and I decided that today is the day that I complete an achievement I've never done in Minecraft before. Today I want to collect all of the panda variants in the game and build them a beautiful panda sanctuary to live in. Now as far as where we're going to be building our panda sanctuary, we've got so much space around our area, but I think this spot right here is going to look the best. Now if I go into free cam, we're going to be placing our panda sanctuary right in this area here and it's going to be more of a large rectangular shape lots of glass, kind of similar to what we have for our apiary with lots of white glass, but we're going to be making it a lot more themed to bamboo and our pandas. So before we can start doing anything else, we do need to clear out this entire area and make space for this build. So we're just going to spend some time clearing all of this area out and leveling it. So let's get into some terraforming and clearing out of this area. And with space cleared out and a base outline in place, 
we are well on our way to a beautiful panda sanctuary. Now, as far as this shape that we're going with, we are actually going to be using a lot of dark oak. We are going to be using the bamboo here, and we're going to be using a lot of white stained glass, as well as using a lot of the mossy cobble variants. And that's pretty much gonna be the color palette that we're going with. So I'm just gonna work on pillaring up to complete these posts. And then we are going to start moving the pandas that we already have found over to this area so that while I'm working on building this up and collecting resources, we will be able to breed up the pandas along the way because we have seven different panda variants that we need to have in order to complete the advancement. Now, it's not like a, a Minecraft advancement where like the top right corner gives you an achievement or anything. It's just, well, it's just something I think would be super cool, especially if we can get that very rare brown panda. Now we've unloaded everything from our shulker box into the chest for what we're going to be building with. But now that we've gotten some collected resources, we're gonna go and find the different pandas that I've put in boats around our area and bring them over here so we can start breeding them up. We'll grab some bamboo first and we'll start by moving the panda that's right over here by our pink sheep little house and we'll move them over to our area. I think he's just a normal one. It's hard to tell because his eyes are clipping through some grass. Now, the scariest part about moving pandas is they are so thick and about the same pixel size as boats, so I always get paranoid that I'm gonna accidentally hit one of them. So we're just gonna do this a little differently and we're gonna hit the boat from the bottom. Perfect, okay. Now I have the panda following me. So this is our normal panda. So what we're gonna do is move all of the pandas a little bit closer to our sanctuary and then we're gonna temporarily put them in a fenced in area so we can breed them up on the side of the build. And then whenever they are ready to breed again, we are gonna be right next to them to make that process go a little bit quicker. We've got our angry panda, but he's got an unwelcome guest inside his boat. And I just need to be careful not to get my panda, perfect. So now this panda, let's see which one you are. You're the angry panda, so you're gonna be interesting to move. I just can't aggro you. So we're gonna be very careful. Ooh, hi, okay, perfect. Are you gonna hurt me? Do you bite? No, okay, you're fine. All right, and we've got panda number four being brought over. Now, I was doing some research and it turns out the sick panda actually gives you the highest probability that you can breed up the brown panda. So what I'm going to do is actually put the sick panda in a separate pen and then look online again to see which panda works best to breed the sick panda with. And then we're going to just try to get a brown panda bred up. What they're saying online is to keep on breeding the weak pandas with normal pandas. And then we're gonna separate out the normal babies that come from the weak pandas. But we do want to end up with two weak pandas and we'll continue breeding the weak pandas. So let's just start this off and see. I think I also need to make sure that they have bamboo around them. So if I just plant some bamboo nearby them, I feel like this will help them with the breeding thing. I, I'm not a pro at this, but this is what I've been told on the internet. So we're just gonna go with it. 
<gasps> Yay! Oh my gosh, yes, he's already a sick one! Okay, so next, now that we have two weak babies, we need to then move our normal panda back into that pen and then keep breeding these guys up once the widow one grows up. And hopefully it won't take us too long before we get a brown panda. And just for a frame of reference, right now I have only bred 281 animals. We'll see how many animals I have at the end of breeding up all of these pandas to get me the brown panda. And while we are waiting for those pandas to be ready to breed again with their cooldown, we're gonna start working on building this up, and then I'll just probably take some stops along the way to breed these guys up until we can get the brown panda. So, enjoy the time lapse. So as you can see, there has been a massive growth in our panda population. Now, I have been doing quite a few different tricks and ways of trying to get a brown panda. I still have no luck. If we look at my stats, we are at 696 animals bred. We started at 281, so I have bred 415 of these dudes. But we are still in search of a brown panda. Now, as far as the pandas that I have been able to get, we were on a live stream able to get another one of the pandas that we've been waiting for and looking for. And that was this little lazy guy right here. I absolutely love how they just land their backs their little toes are so cute but this is the lazy panda that we were able to find so in total we have the lazy panda we've got our sick panda we've got a worried panda and we have a regular panda as well and the angry boy with the angry eyebrows so the only two pandas we have left to find are the playful one which sticks out its tongue and does little somersaults and then the very rare and very hard to breed and find a brown one. I'm going to work on continuing to breed these ones up for our little panda sanctuary. It's coming along great. We do need some more of the white stained glass, so I'm gonna go smelt up some more sand using our bamboo as our fuel source. And then once we get this all done, then the only two tasks we really have are to get those last two pandas. So we spent some time breeding up all the cramp pandas we had. We tried breeding up the regular pandas whose parents were the sick pandas to see if that would get us a brown panda as the new baby with no luck. And after we bred 59 more pandas, getting us to over 470 pandas bred with no brown panda in sight, we decided to go flying around some different bamboo jungle biomes in hopes of finding one spot naturally. And as we flew around and free cammed around, we still had no luck finding one. Then on a live stream, we once again went out looking for a brown panda. This time we were flying over 10,000 blocks away to a mega bamboo jungle we found from a seed finder website and found some pretty incredible terrain along the way. We ended up flying past spawn into the frozen ocean for a ways and discovered we had a giant mushroom island right next to spawn this entire time, which was pretty cool. We traveled across what seemed like unending ocean, checking the little bamboo jungles along the way, stopping to loot a pillager outpost, and found the ponder goat horn. And finally, when we had traveled the 10,000 blocks, we had finally made it to the mega bamboo jungle biome that we had looked up. And as we scoured the jungle, we found a jungle temple, we found some regular black and white pandas, we looked around even longer and found a pillager outpost in a pretty cool location, we then found a second jungle temple, and a third. And then it happened. We finally got our first look at a brown 
panda in Minecraft. So after all of the breeding pandas for nine hours, all we had to do was travel 11,000 blocks looking in bamboo jungle biomes, and we finally found our friend, which I live stream named Poe. Well guys, now that we found our brown panda, we have a problem to address first. Our Z chord is at 11,000 and our base chords are at negative 2,000. So that means we are 13,000 blocks away from home and we have to make a panda follow us all the way back home, which if you've ever tried to lead pandas, it is painstaking. So we're going to attempt to do something that could be a little bit dangerous, but it will save us many, many hours of time. And that is bringing our friend here through the nether. Now I'm not thinking to just lead them across all the dangerous terrain, and no, no, no. We're going to make a tunnel through the nether, kind of like by the nether roof area, and then we're gonna go all the way back to our base area with our little friend, and hopefully nothing will go wrong with this plan. But before we start trying to make our way into the nether with our friend, I do firstly want to try to go and check out those three different jungle temples nearby. So for right now, I just wanna put our little friend Poe in a box here to keep them all safe. Now let's go looking for jungle temples. So we've got one right here. Okay, we're going into the jungle temple. I don't see any scary guys yet, but I'm gonna block these off and break this. Okay, just some gold. And I know for a fact that there is a little sneaky room back here and I could figure out the code and I've done it before and, and frankly, I, I couldn't really be bothered this time around. Oh, diamonds. I've never actually found good things in here. So this is wonderful. I will gladly take some diamonds. So now let's go find those other two. There we go. And what's in here? Oh, yes. Oh, we get two of them. Let's go. And we have, oh my gosh, diamonds. I never find diamonds in the jungle temples. I always find just like rotten flesh and bones and bamboo, but we found three diamonds and four wild armor trims. I mean, this is, this is pretty good for jungle temples. There we go. All right, there we go. Nothing much in this one. Well, our third jungle temple didn't give us much, but in total, we got four wild armor trim and three diamonds. So I'd say that's pretty good. Next, we started collecting up all the needed obsidian for another portal, and then we built the frame near where Poe was to make it a little easier to bring him through the portal. All right, I've boxed in our nether portal with a bunch of leaves and made a little door to get up to our little panda friend up there for now. But I'm gonna close this door. I'm going to plop down my bed, and we're gonna use this gold block to make a gold helmet. Just so I stay safe and I don't have piglins coming after me right away. So we are quickly going to throw this on and it looks like it's night, so we'll take a nap. Let's see what we get in the nether. I'm crouching. It looks like it's just basalt. Oh good, it's just mostly wastelands. Okay, this is so, so good. I'm gonna take off shaders really quickly. Oh, well, hello there. Ooh, I need to be careful. Oh, hi! Oh, my word. Oh, gosh. That's a little scary. I'm glad I saw that. Then, after almost having lava fall on me, I grabbed the cords in the nether by Poe and then went back into the overworld to calculate how far we would have to nether tunnel in order to get to our home portal. All right, I figured out that our home nether cords are at negative 137 and negative 309. And then for the nether cords on the other side of this portal right here, we are actually at positive 291 and 1389. So we do have quite a bit to go as far as going on the Z chord, but going on our X chord should be pretty simple. So now that we know where we're going, I'm going to still leave my bed here and we're gonna go into the nether. We've got some food, we've got flint and steel, and we're just gonna make our way back home. Okay. We're back in the nether, but let's figure this out. So if we need to go into the negatives, we want this to go down. So it looks like going west on the X is where we'll go. And then if we're at 13 in the positives on the Z, we need to go to the negatives. So this needs to go down. So we need to go north and west. So now that we know where we're going, I'm just going to start tunneling my way safely and see how long this takes me. So we're just gonna go on our little, uh, our X cord for a bit and figure this out.
All right, guys, we finally made it to the staircase that we made to our area. So down this way is our portal and way to get down into our area. And I never thought I'd be so excited to see our space again. If we go inside our portal here, on our base side, we have four portals and I really don't want our little friend to accidentally just, you know, end up uh, going back through our portals. So I'm just going to break these three just so that there's only one portal that our little friend is gonna be able to go through. And honestly, this is gonna be kind of nice because having four here was so, so loud. And then we're just going to make a little stairway all the way down. This is how our little panda's gonna come to the overworld and live in our base area finally. But before we go back through, let's fix up our elytra quickly. All right, I just got my two pickaxes fully healed up and my elytra is healed up as well. So let's go bring back our little friend Poe. I have a feeling this is gonna take a very long time to leave them with bamboo, but let's uh, let's see how long this actually takes. All right, and there is a split here. Now this path leads to where we got our camel for the first time and that coral reef. And this one leads us along the uh, nether roof and all the way down to where our little panda friend is. I have bamboo, so I'm ready to give that to them. Then since I didn't want to walk all the way back down to get our panda, I decided to dig out a space tall enough so I could jump and engage my elytra in my tunnel. This allowed me to fly down the tunnel much, much quicker than if I had just decided to walk. We made our way past some piglins and then it didn't take long before we had reached our portal to our brown panda. Hi, Poe, how are you doing? You see the little bamboo in my hand. Do you want a little snack? I'll give you a snack once we make it through, okay? Cause we have a long journey and I'll give you all the foods and snacks once we make the journey. Drum roll, we've got Poe inside the panda's sanctuary. Oh, we finally have a little brown panda in here. Oh my gosh, look at him. The final panda we had to find was the playful panda. I had tried breeding up four to five sets of pandas at our base area with no luck, so we decided to go back to the mega bamboo jungle where we had found the brown panda. And within the first four minutes of looking around, we found the playful one. So then we had the task of repeating the exact same nether journey to get the playful panda back home that we did for the brown panda. And after a 45 minute trek, we finally had our seventh panda safely home in our cozy bamboo jungle area. And we officially have the playful panda in here as well, which means I have successfully collected all seven panda variants in the game. We've got the sick panda. We've got the normal panda. We've got the lazy one, which looks very similar to our normal panda, except that the lazy one actually has a smile on their face. Of course, we have Poe the brown panda. We've got our angry panda. We've got the playful panda. And we have the worried panda. And with all seven variants found, that's gonna do it for today's project. We were able to find all seven and we made them this beautiful panda sanctuary. They've got a little pond to play in. They've got some rocks to climb on and they can just have a good time hanging out here. And of course we have the particles from the spore blossoms and the cherry blossoms everywhere. And I think this is so, so cozy. But since we have all these pandas, I'm gonna need some name suggestions for these. I know that we have Poe and one of our little sick ones is going to be named Wings in honor of Frog Crafting's sick panda that she has in one of her worlds. 
I have been spending a fair bit of time between the nether and the overworld moving all of our pandas, so today I want to spend some time adventuring in the end and make my first ever Enderman XP farm. We'll be decorating our XP farm in our classic bamboo block palette and we'll be incorporating a ton of cherry leaves, cherry logs, and of course lots of lanterns. Don't forget to leave a like on this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's make an Enderman XP farm. Now before we start our adventure in the end, I want to first name all the little fish from your guys' comments. Now the only issue with getting name tags is that while we do have some librarians down here that double as the villagers that help with our iron farm, they have not been leveled up very far. So I'm gonna try to get our mending guy leveled up a few more times to get us some name tags. So so we're gonna go collect some sugarcane since this guy trades us some paper for emeralds and then hopefully we can get them unlocked. So off we go to our sugarcane farm and to say hello to all our fishies in our pond. I love that we have just fish inside our little koi pond here, but I think my favorite feature is just that I decided to put glass here so we can kind of see the fish as we go underwater down into the sugarcane farm area. I just think that's so much fun, but I don't have a lot of sugarcane, so let's see. Okay, there's paper in here, so we'll just make some paper. And we're going to check our chests to see if we have any emeralds. Okay, two, uh, that's something. And there's paper and books in this one. And back down we go into our iron farm. And I don't know how much will actually get this to work for us, but at least if we get some glass that will level them up once. So I think they should level up. Okay, to a clock. A clock is expert. Not exactly what we're looking for, but we've got two emeralds here. And if we try to do some more glass, we've got some more. And we can also trade some books and we'll trade glass to level them up the rest. Let's see if we can get name tags pretty please. <gasps> yes. Now we're gonna go over to our village, trade a bunch of sticks, get a bunch of emeralds since I need like nine or 10 different name tags. So now we just need to grab a gold helmet, take off our upgraded one, stick on our gold helmet, and off we go into the nether. Luckily, now that I have rockets, we can just zoom our way all the way up over here instead of having to take my not so cute and decorated uh, pathway. And we are back over at our village. Hello, my friends. I'm here to trade with you. Lots of sticks. Let's see, we've got silk touch, we've got some lanterns, we've got bookshelves, uh, lovely. Oh, these ones actually would give me cheaper, cheaper name tags, wouldn't they? I think the other one also gave us cheaper name tags, but if we need lots of name tags, we might as well just level these guys up. Kind of thinking on the go here. So let's start by just converting a bunch of these into uh, logs, and then we'll trade these into sticks to trade with our Fletcher. So let's just get our Fletcher guy. Hello, my friend. 18. Pleasure doing business with you. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Love it. And if you could just refresh, I would much appreciate it. And I'm just going to work on collecting up some of the other resources I'll need for the project in the end, which is I'm going to use a lot of lanterns for some of the decorative bits. So we're just going to work on leveling these guys up while we wait for our Fletcher to reset, just because this will give us an easier access to even more name tags. Oh my gosh, I just got one name tag for one emerald. <gasps> you, my protection for friend, are my absolute favorite. Oh my word, I forgot we could get them this low. <gasps> this is so good. This literally, I thought this was going to take me way longer than this actually did. This is amazing. Okay, well, uh, I guess uh, we'll just take all of the name tags you shall give us. And I think I can just get 12 from you, but we'll definitely try to do the same thing with these other ones because honestly, that is pretty amazing. And I'm also able to get more lanterns. It is a good day at this little village and in my bamboo world. Now we'll just trade with you, get rid of some of these compasses so that we can get you leveled up and giving us a nice little one name tag trade. And look at that, 24 names 
name tags. I would say that's definitely enough. And now we just go back through the portal and back into our cozy area to name tag some fish friends. All right, so one of the names that I saw in the comments that I think would be super fun is calling one of our fishes Nemo. Another fun name I saw in the comments was Bubblegum. We've got Sunny, Finley, Creamsicle, Kudo, Ponyo, Goober, and lastly, we have Gilbert. Now our first fishy friend to find and name is Nemo. So let me just look around until I find the right fishy. Okay, here we go. And Nemo, Nemo, can I name you Nemo? Nemo, yeah. And we've got Kudo, which means black in Japanese. So this was one of the name suggestions as well is Kudo. And we've got Creamsicle. We've also got Sunny and we've got Ponyo, Goober. And we've got Finley. And lastly, we've got Gilbert, our purple and lime colored one. Now that we've got all of our little fish friends named, it is time to get ready to collect some resources and make our way over into the end. Now, if we fly over to our storage room, the block palette that we're gonna go with is going to be our classic bamboo wood. We'll get more of this collected up. Such a shocker, I know, we're using bamboo wood. What a concept. We'll also be using scaffolding and lots of cherry leaves, which we're going to collect more of these as well. And we're going to be using lots of lanterns as well as spore blossoms for decoration. Now I'm just going to start collecting up more of the blocks that we're going to need to build up our Enderman XP farm. So we're just going to collect a bunch of these cherry leaves first. Now that we've got this shulker box full with all of the items that we'll need, we also have this one here that has some of the rest of the more like redstoney bits and our little dude name tag for the Endermite. We do need to get a lot more Ender Pearls. The tutorial video said about two stacks, which is 16 and 16. So I will need to go back into the nether to hunt for ender pearls, which will be a fun time. I also need a rail for this minecart to sit on and I need some more trap doors. I need eight of them. So let's just grab some of our bamboo blocks. We'll go to a crafting table and get eight at least. We'll add those into our box. For the rails on the minecart, we are going to need to just make some. So let's find where we make them. Then we've got our rails. Then all we have to do is put back the excess that we do not need. And now the last thing we need is some more ender pearls. It's ironic that I said that I did not want to go to the nether or the overworld much today and I wanted to be in the end and here we are going into the nether for some ender pearls. And before we go and grab our gold helmet and go into the nether, I do need more food. So we're gonna quickly stop by and grab some steak from our cow crusher. And with 12 steak, we're gonna go into the nether. 12 steak should be fine, right? And we can't forget bringing some boats with us. Now, as we're walking over to our nether portal, I just remembered something that I have to deal with. And it's, uh, it's this, the, the staircase where I brought my pandas from. So let's just quickly uh, take this down so that our portal room once again uh, looks cute. And should be the final blocks. Perfect. Our cute dojo mojo casa house is back to normal. 
But enough being distracted, it's time to go into the nether, looking for some endermen. Now, if I remember, I think we have a warped forest somewhere over here. Now, I'm able to fly around in the nether, so let's do a little fly around. And hopefully, we'll be safe on our journeys. So guys, as I grab these last few ender pearls, I realized that clerics will literally give me ender pearls if I trade them emeralds. So I think what I want to do is go back into the overworld and just do that method. I feel like that will be a much safer and quicker way potentially than just me hoping that I can find enough endermen and not actually die myself in the process. So I think we're just gonna go make our way back home, hopefully, and not hurt ourselves like I am right now. So we made our way back through our portal, grabbing the brewing stand and making our way over to the villager that's been trapped in a boat for at least five episodes. We set down the brewing stand so they'd take the job as cleric, and then it was time to get a bunch of emeralds to trade with our new cleric friend. So we were back once again in our village, we traded a bunch of sticks for a bunch of emeralds, and then we were back at our base area again, ready to level up our cleric friend from novice all the way to expert until they traded us ender pearls. All right, we've got our two stacks, so we're going to leave our friend here. I'm just going to cover him over with with some of the blocks that we got from them, but they should be safe. I don't think anything can get them and he definitely has enough light in there. As far as resources, we've got everything we need to start building this up. So let's uh, make our way over to our stronghold and go into the end. Okay, here we go, into the end. All right, so now we get to start making our Enderman XP farm and I'm going to pull up the tutorial for making this on my second monitor. And if you're curious for the same one, check the video description, I'll put the tutorial I'm gonna follow in there. Now, first things first, I am going to wear my little carved pumpkin hat just because I don't want the Enderman to come after me, so. Yeah, this is going to be my face while I do this. So just imagine you got the cute little red uh, face instead of the pumpkin. And now I get the pinky workout of placing these two stacks of cherry leaves all the way out into the void. And hopefully I will not die, but luckily I've got rockets. So let's just get this done.
All right. Well, it looks like we got everything figured out for the farm. The last step that I was trying to figure out, but it wouldn't actually do, was the tutorial said to put a carpet on top of the Endermite. And I am clicking all over. I even did hitboxes. And whether I'm shifting to right click and place it or not shifting, it won't let me place the carpet above. So maybe that's because it's a moss carpet. I'm not exactly sure. But if anything happens to my farm, it's because I could not get that little uh, step to work. But let's take a look at our farm. I think it looks so pretty and I'm not even done with it yet, but this is gonna be so nice. I've never done an Enderman XP farm, like I was saying. So this felt very new to me and very scary because I'm just so paranoid of getting hurt in the end and especially by all these Endermen. But let's see how this does for us, shall we? Whoa, look at that. Oh, we're getting so much XP. Wow. Oh my word, this is literally amazing. Oh my word, it's going so fast. I just need to fix that issue. And our sword with sharpness five, knockback, looting, sweeping. It's pretty great if I do say so myself. Look at all the XP. I love that. This is pretty cool, I do have to admit. But now I'll go into free cam just so we can kind of see what it looks like. And we don't get to hear the Enderman anymore, which is even better. So this is what our farm looks like. Now that we have this all working for the most part, not sure why those guys aren't aggroing, but you know, it's fine. But now we just get to do the fun part of decorating this and I cannot wait to get this all cute. So let's start decorating this place, shall we? And just like that, we have a working Enderman XP farm for the very first time in one of my worlds. And I love how this turned out. I was a little bit concerned with the low amount of spawns because I think I have so many lanterns that it's actually causing the Enderman to not spawn as often. But honestly, I don't really need that much from these Endermen, especially when they just give so much XP regardless. And with the Enderman XP farm created, that brings us up to a thousand days survived in this world. Thank you for joining me for this movie adventure and all that we accomplished in these first 1,000 days. Now, we're not done in this world by any means. We have so much more to explore and build. So if you want to continue the cozy bamboo world adventures, you can click the video on the screen where we transform the end island into a giant koi pond.